<laughs> Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 119 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long. We are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's Great. We are highlighting another great organization and event this week as we highlight the Fossil Fair happening soon at the Shio Museum of Natural History and Planetarium. We have Nathan Chapman with us on the mic, but we also have Tiffany Stewart back there behind the camera and, and lurking. Lurk, lurking's a good, yeah, lurking's <laughs> a good, good description. So um, Nathan is the uh, farm and fossil program specialist, and Tiffany is the marketing coordinator. Nathan and Tiffany, partially, it's great to have you back on, and welcome to the podcast. Oh yeah, thank you for having us back. And just to go ahead and warn our listeners, uh, we have Amy Anderson on the controls today for the first time in about 200 episodes. It's, oh, we haven't had 200 episodes, but it's been a while. So we had some opportunities before we started recording. But I'll just leave it. I'll leave it at that. So um, as usual, we're going to get right to it. So Nathan, if you don't mind, I know also mentioned that um, Nathan and Tiffany were on episode, I think it was episode 64, maybe. I'm going off of memory. I looked it up yesterday, but I forgot to look it up again this morning, talking about some some of the things happening at the museum. And uh, so they're back, but maybe you'll have some listeners who did, hadn't heard that episode, Nathan. So maybe if you don't mind, just share it. Tell us a little bit about yourself again, if you don't mind, and then we'll get right um, to um, talking about the uh, fossil fair and, and what's happening at the museum. Oh, yes, definitely. So I'm Nathan Chapman. I am the farm and fossil program specialist at the Shield Museum. Did you just make that up today? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I so think I, I actually added it to my one of my emails. Okay. So nice. recently, so, so like it's a, So yesterday. it's official. Yeah, it's official now. Yeah. I have to update my signature so it adds it to every email. Gotcha. Not just the ones that I choose. Um, so... Got to remember to write that down and do that. Um, but largely, I am a educator at the Shield Museum, so my okay. main role is teaching and educating. So I'll generally educate several hundred students a week, fossils, rocks, dirt, all kinds of earth science things. But one of my favorite things is fossils. So okay. that's been a passion since I was a child. Um, and fortunately, through the museum, I've got to have some awesome experiences going and not, not only teaching about fossils but learning and discovering fossils for myself all right very cool yeah that's some cool stuff i mean because when i think of fossils it's obviously not the only thing but i mean dinosaurs man oh yeah definitely. Right? I mean, that's the first thing that a, a, a man or a boy thinks about for sure you know what and i'm gonna start real quick you know if, if naomi was here i bet we wouldn't be having this issue with him i was just playing a little you're good extra background music. you know um wouldn't be bumping into his microphone she would have had that she would have had that squared away <laughs> so Nathan, how did you end up at the museum? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it seems um, like I remember this the, the, <laughs> when I asked you that the first time. There was a good story or something there. Well, COVID happened right in the hiring process. So, yeah, it seems like I remember um, something about that. I was doing lots of odd jobs, like landscape maintenance, working at Daniel Stowe for a while, putting up Christmas lights pretty much. So okay. I was bouncing around all over the place, just trying to find a place that kind of fit my passion for education as well as plants and just the natural world in general. So I've been to the Shill Museum as a child, like regularly every single year. Unfortunately, not to a fossil fair, which in hindsight, I wish my parents would have took me to as a child. But all in all, um, position came open. I applied, got an interview, and then COVID hit shut down the hiring process for like a year, year yeah, and a half, yeah. and then I got contacted again, got hired part-time to teach about pumpkins, which is another exciting area of my life that we will not go into today, um, but hired on for pumpkins and then kind of stuck around and okay. got into all kinds of types of education, so. All yeah. right, well, very good. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, sometimes there's some interesting stories here, and I'd also know that um, last time they were on, I think Tiffany had been with the organization like a week so yeah, right that was, uh, you're hired. Let's go on a podcast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. So, um, to, yeah, let's get right to it. So we're, mm-hmm. we're focusing on, uh, you know, the fossil fair, it's something I'm somewhat familiar with, um, right. cause it goes back actually 
few years, doesn't it? I mean, it's, this is not something that this is the twenty fourth. I can't really say. I, I thought it had been a while. Did it get skipped any during that, that crazy COVID year, or, or I don't believe we skipped it. I believe it was a fossil different. month. Oh, okay. Air quotes. Okay. So instead of being one central event, super spreader event where everybody's together, <laughs> we kind of spread it out over a month. I wasn't around during that time, but gotcha. I think okay. fossil themed things for the month of February. Okay. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Can you just share with our listeners, you know, why you're here today? What is the fossil fuel? I just almost said fossil fuel. I mean, fossil fuel. Related, fossil yeah. Related. Fossil. So what is a fossil fair? Why is there a fossil fair? Just kind of, you know, anything and everything you want to share about that. Right. So fossil fair is going to be February 24th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Shield Museum. And the main focus for our fossil fair is just bringing together lots of talented, passionate people that love fossils, geology, gemstones, everything that's kind of under the ground, rocks and things, and bringing them together so that families, um, enthusiasts, all can come together and kind of like celebrate fossils, learn. You can bring fossils for people like professional paleontologists to actually identify and help you kind of like figure out what you have. Or you can uh, come do all kinds of different activities and actually find your own fossils to take home. So we have fossil material from Colorado, fluorescent Colorado, that everybody can come and, like, split open and actually find, like, leaves, fish, insects, all kinds of other fossils from the Eocene, so right after the dinosaurs died out, that time period. Um, We have, and then we have a mix of all kinds of other fossils in a giant dig pit that you can hop in, (laughs) dig around, and there's a ridiculous amount of mammal teeth in there as well, so... I wish you luck with that because <laughs> there's a lot of them. Um, trying to think what else we've got. All types of professional paleontologists will be there to, so you can speak with, kind of like learn about what paleontology is. We'll have the gemstone mind to actually look for your own gemstones and actually discover them. And the North Carolina Fossil Club, several members from that organization will be here. So okay. they're passionate um, people from all over the state of North Carolina that have discovered and found their own fossils throughout the state. Okay. And what was the other? Oh, planetarium. How did I? That's on the other end of the building. That's the reason I forget it. And we're going to have a special custom-made planetarium show kind of pointing out some of the flaws with the Jurassic Park franchise, but also oh. highlighting the benefits yeah. that that franchise has actually had to paleontology in general. So, Would that be like, you know, just – Obviously, it's such a popular <laughs> and cool movie, especially the first one. I mean, they've all oh, been yeah. entertaining, but right. the first one was just mesmerizing, right? Um, it really was. And <laughs> so, I guess that just brings more awareness of that type of thing, and get more get get more people interested interest, interested in general. Gosh, sorry. Right. Right. So, and so yeah. So sometimes, yeah, entertainment uh, we can take advantage of you know things outside of our control, right, to help with with uh, events like this or or just the whole. Um, world of, of fossils and paleontology in general. So, right. Um, so why, you know, why 24, you see, you mentioned, you think it's been 24 years. Why a, a fossil fair? Why, um, is it obviously stayed around and it obviously, it's obviously it's a popular event or people come or you wouldn't have the new museum wouldn't be doing it for 24 years. So why, why do you think it's such a, um, a longstanding event and, and, and why does it continue? I feel like it relates two main points, that one, dinosaurs are awesome (laughs) and cool, and it's also a kind of like a hobby or interest or even a profession that's fairly inviting for everybody from every, like every walk of life, like walk of life. So if you're interested in, you know, gemstones, there's that avenue, not fossils quite, but there's that avenue, but even within the fault, even within the fossil section, like if you're interested in like turtles, you can go and find turtle fossils in the state of North Carolina. If you're interested in dinosaurs, you can find very few but very awesome um, fossils from, like, duckbill dinosaurs at the coast. Okay. So it's kind of a, I want to say it's like a niche North Carolina, like, activity that, unfortunately, fewer people know about. Um, so especially at the coast, there's so many awesome fossils that you can collect, like megalodon teeth. But there's also, I'm trying to remember the name of the park, Green Springs Park that I actually got to visit. Okay. And you can go wade into the river there and actually 
scoop up sand. And if you do that for about an hour and a half, you can find maybe a couple hundred shark teeth from the Cretaceous all the way till kind of, I can't remember the end date, but from the time, time of dinosaurs up till fairly recent. So you can find all kinds of amazing fossils in the state of North Carolina. And it kind of goes back to that dinosaurs are awesome, sharks are awesome, that whole thing. I feel yeah. like that's a sticking factor. Oh, yeah, and no question. As a museum, I feel like we have the responsibility of providing um, the general public with a place that they can go learn about, explore, and collect their own fossils. Yeah, so I'm trying to think back. This is going to date me a little bit. Um, long before Jurassic Park, there was a, when I was a kid, there was a show on TV called Land of the Lost. Are you familiar with that? I See, I am so old, it. man. I mean, I was young, so I was, you know, I knew that the dinosaur was going to come and attack Gastonia, you know, right. after watching that show. <laughs> That's long before your time, too, um, Amy. But go, if you, you can go YouTube that, you talk about some awful dinosaur graphics, you know, it's like, um, it, it's almost like not, it wasn't the, it wasn't the clay action, but it was just, you know, you could, the stop action, you know, right, right. but it was really cool stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. And then there was a, there was a movie made as a, um, with, um, oh God, Will Ferrell was in it, I think. Anyway, I, dig I sorry, I took, went down a rabbit <laughs> hole there, but you know, again, my point there is, um. Now, well, that's where the slee stacks came from. You ever heard of slee stacks? Huh. I got some friends out there that are listening who are going to know what <laughs> I'm talking about. But YouTube, go search on YouTube for for Land of the Lost and slee stacks, and you'll see some of the scariest stuff you've ever seen. And when you, if you're like six years old, okay, okay. So you mentioned North Carolina. What is um, what is some typical? Do you know some typical fossils that might be found in in North Carolina that that are cool? That are cool. Okay. <laughs> So there is nothing cool that you're going to find from, like, Raleigh, Charlotte, toward the mountains. Okay. Everything that was alive when those rocks were laid down was microscopic. So okay. So you're going to find little black specks, and that's the extent of it. Boring. Yeah, boring stuff. Like, really important for, like, Understand. our understanding of things. But sure. But kind of like snooze fest as far as, like, oh, wow, I know what this is when I pick it up and look at it. No T-Rexes. Yeah, no T-Rexes. Okay. Um. Generally, once you get past Raleigh toward the coast is where you're going to find most of your really amazing fossils. Um, so is that, just, that, is that just simply because of the soil, or is it um, yeah, is there so, some other reason? So fossils, you're, you're, And remember, you're talking to a total novice here. I got okay. you. I got you. So fossils form best when they can get buried. So it's okay. very hard to bury stuff when it's on dry land, Fair unless enough. it's like a lake or a river area. So you really want an ocean. So... The coast of North Carolina has been, like, all the way up to Raleigh has been either under the water or above water multiple times. Um, so, in that section, you can find all kinds of, I'm trying to think, well fossils are very common. Like, okay. there are some well fossils in rivers down toward the coast that are so large that you just can't move. Like, oh, there's wow. just well fossils laying in the river, and people see them, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I want them, but... They're yeah, what just are you gonna so do with heavy it? that you can't even get them out of the river. They're so large. So well That's fossils. Interesting. Um, going back to the duckbill dinosaurs, the hadrosaur group, there's several fragmentary fossils. So we find teeth, feet, like toe bones and things like that. Okay. So it shows that they were here, but it's really hard to find them. So they're amazing in the fact that they're so rare. Um, and then lots of late Cretaceous, like marine animals, so sharks again, oysters, are really amazing. Like, you just have to take my word for it. They're really cool, <laughs> really interesting to find. Um, and all types of diversity of seashells and, like, ocean fauna from that portion of the state. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Toothed whales. We kind of already talked about whales, but, like, really early whales that had, like, big, like, sharp teeth. Like, yeah. Yeah, that like type of whale. Nightmare um, when you're a kid kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that type of whale. Turtles, dolphins, a walrus was also found in the coast oh, of North wow. Carolina. So all types of kind of like ice age fauna, I guess you'd say. Okay. So again, remember you're talking to a novice. Um, right, right. Help, help myself and maybe some of our listeners on, on time frame, you know, when you talk about the different periods. And, right. Because you're talking about things that, especially when you say things like maybe the Raleigh air has been um, underwater, not underwater for 
<laughs> over because right. right. we're, we're not talking about a couple months. Uh, no, right. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming we're talking about millions of years here. Right. So, can right. you give us, um, I guess, us, us novices kind of a, a, an understanding of what what that might be, or is that a too so? In general, <laughs> I'm trying to. Is that like a question you get all the time from somebody like me, and you're like, oh, not that no, question no, again? No. Okay. So, <laughs> in the past, like Cretaceous area, Cretaceous era, when it was very very hot, there was no ice caps. So. No Antarctica, no North Arctic, Pole, yeah. no Santa Claus at this time period. Mm. So it was all melted. That's it didn't di- have a home. That's disappointing. Yeah. So so all the water was melted. So the coast would have been Raleigh area. Sure. Okay. Okay. Then as the earth has cooled over time for ice ages, the water gets kind of frozen up at the top. So the sea levels drop and then it'll melt a little bit, rise, drop, rise, drop. Sure. Like mi- millions and millions of years and Hundreds and hundreds of and times. We're in a, is it fair to say we're in a cycle now that it's it's all either it's warmer than it was then, obviously. Right. And right. warming, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We, we don't we don't talk about those right. things on right. our the gas and gray podcast. Right. So <laughs> um, one um, very um, kind of like kind of like help you grasp it is as you actually go to the coast. Okay. You'll be driving. You'll get out of the sand hills and you'll drive and it's flat. Yep. And then you'll go down a little hill. And you go down a little hill. Okay, yeah. Every time you go down like four feet, that was a coastline at one point. Gotcha. So. Interesting. So, okay. So it'll, you can kind of like feel like, because you'll go like, you know, several miles and then it'll be another little drop off. So all it's, time, time is just so big. I mean. It's hard I to grasp. Understanding it. it, it it's like, hard. It is. No, it, it, right. it, it, it's hard to grasp. Yeah. Uh, so like, believe if. The age of the Earth were roughly like an hour. If we think of it as like an hour, people have been around for one and a half seconds. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen just, some of those graphs and stuff that, yeah. Like, I understand it. but So, in other words, we're not that important. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to, like, grasp, like, yeah. how big yeah. it is. So Yeah, and how long it is. Okay. Right. Right. So, times. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to just go here. Maybe I shouldn't, but. I think it was 2018, my family, and we have some friends that we um, travel with. They're our best friends, and our kids are roughly the same ages over time. But we took a trip out west, and, man, I'm going to be in trouble because I'm not going to get the location right, but I think it was South Dakota. Um, It was a mammoth site. Sure. Man. (laughs) But it was one of the coolest things I I have ever seen because I had – that is not something I'd ever experienced before. You know, and, and so it's an active site too, right? But it's okay. enclosed. You know, they, they they've been built around it, right? And right. Um, it's unbelievable the number of mammoths that were discovered there. And you can find, you can. It, it's just if you haven't ever you've never done that, and uh, yeah, our friend who kind of plans the trips for us, yeah, I'm gonna probably get a text if she hears this. Like, how could you not? How could you forget where we were and exactly? <laughs> But it was just such a memorable event that you couldn't remember the well, location. Well, there were just yeah. so much information. No, but, I mean, in all activity. seriousness, it was one of the, again, I've seen a lot of cool things uh, in our travels mm-hmm. with, with, this, with this family, and um, it was just, so my point there is, um, if you had never done something like that or seen something like that, now, uh, I'm pretty sure we're not going to have a, a mammoth at um, the Fossil Fair here at the Shua Museum, maybe part of one or maybe um, – or, or, or that's a secret you'd have to, you know, you you have to show to know. Show to know. Yeah. Show to know. We'll go with that. Okay. We'll go with that. But it's just shocking how large it was and just, anyway, if you have a, I would just encourage you <laughs> listeners out there, if you've never gone to a site like that, um, I, I would absolutely encourage you to strongly to do it. And so that obviously um, leads into exactly when it is, calls, just, you know, anything. You know, I think they said the 24th, which is, we're recording this on Wednesday, on Valentine's Day, and it was yep. going to release on the 15th, so we'll have about a week and a half from when we first released this, so our, our listeners will have plenty of time to, to, to get there and find out when and where, and, well, obviously we know where, at the Shield Museum. If you, do, if, if you live in Gaston County and you don't know where the Shield the Museum is, then you need to get there quick. Right, so definitely. Go ahead, Nathan. Right, so details are Saturday, February 24th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, so we're really encouraging advanced tickets so that we okay. can kind of get a head count, if you want to sure. say, and also streamline the entry process. So we're going to have two entrances, the main lobby and the lower gallery. 
so we can get as many people in as fast as possible so you can get to the action as quickly as possible. So advent, advanced tickets are $15 for adult, adults, okay. $14 for youth, $11 for museum members, and if you wait to the day of the event and purchase your ticket at the door, it will be $18 a person. So you will save a, con, a yeah, good bit. Sure. Especially if you've got kids or you bring in multiple, multiple family members. Right, definitely. Um, and I believe that's the main details. I think I've covered okay. most of the activities and events, except for the planetary. I'm sorry. Please don't get on to me, my boss, <laughs> for forgetting. <laughs> so who is your direct boss, if you don't mind me uh, asking? Candace Jordan is my okay. direct boss, which is – the planetarium is her child and okay. her baby, so I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> well, we can we, we can delete some of this. We can I tell you, we yeah, can yeah. Um, we can edit it and we'll put like a voice your voice in earlier and that talk. That about sounds good. Yeah. Well, over. Let's do that. Right. We can do that. Um. So again, if, and just in case you don't, people that might not know, the Show Museum is uh, what's the actual address? The muse. I mean, I grew up across the street, so. But it's across from Gas County kind of Public Library on Garrison Boulevard, yep. beside Greer uh, Middle School. Uh, a lot of construction there, so people mm-hmm. pull into the main parking lot. There's no parking. Can, they can where, where else can they park? Um, just for reference. So we have, I believe we have a deal with. I'm trying to think, one of the churches up the street. I can't remember the name, and occasionally a little East bit Side, of, or First Pres, or yes, okay, First Pres. <laughs> Yeah. Right. yeah, so that's the... Yeah, that's that, That's just we super close. We yeah. outgrown our parking lot, so... Yeah, yeah and that's a positive, right? <laughs> definitely. Because I've been to events there. Is one reason I've asked. I've been to events there where it was so crowded, which is a great thing, mm-hmm. not a negative. Definitely. But, yeah, we had to park. Uh, we couldn't park in the main parking lot. Yeah, so that's the main logistical things, okay. I believe. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Um, so there you have it, our listeners. That's you know, got the, this big event coming up in a, roughly a week and a half from the time we're going to release this episode. Um, kind of let's kind of take a step back since it's been, if you don't mind, uh, and this is for Tiffany as well. We we'll, we'll make her relay a message that she doesn't. I don't know. How can we put it? Doesn't have the guts to get on camera and on behind the mic. I swear, that's where we're that's what we're going with today. Um, anything else going on at the museum at the moment? I know there's a Something coming up that we're not going to talk about today because I think we have somebody else coming in a, in a, a week or two to talk about that big event because I mean, we right. really might be in right. trouble if we talk yep. about that one today. Can't talk about it. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. Tony mm-hmm. might. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be on Tony's bad side. No. Um, but anything else going on in the museum at the moment, or is this you know kind of the big thing? Obviously, there's a small. All, this seems like always I'm going on at the museum. Right. Or. This has largely consumed everything, all of my understood brain area. So I'm all anything else, Tiffany, going on that's worth talking about today. There may not be. Oh yeah, so snakes of the Carolinas. I don't have much information. Again, it's kind of outside of my area, but we do have a new exhibit coming. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, new exhibit coming to the North Carolina Hall. So it's kind of the hall that has the cougar on the rock that wags its tail at you occasionally. <laughs> So it'll be kind of like a showcase of all of our native snakes. Okay. And it'll be a very interesting. I mean, cool we're talking exhibit. about dinosaurs, sharks, and snakes. I if mean, what if, else could you want? If you got a, if you got young kids, man, this has <laughs> got it. This has got it going on here. Right. Um, what about so? Okay, that's good. Um, because I mean, there are, you know, I I'm afraid that I grew up here, so I'm afraid that I take the museum for granted. Like a couple other things that that are probably around here that 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 happens as well. So I'm just going to, especially if you're a long time resident, not have to be a long time resident, but if you've never been to the museum, I'm just telling you it is the gem of Gaston County, in my opinion. I mean, um, I think I said this last time. Maybe you guys are on, or I've had Tony on. Of course, I, actually, you know, you, you guys are probably the first four time guest. Wow. Yeah, we had Ann. We had <laughs> Ann on. Then we had um, you guys on, and Tony was talking about the, um, was it Q, the barbecue um, exhibit, or and that went on forever now. So, gosh, so y'all got it going on here. So, um, but it's just, it might be more well-known outside of Gaston County than, than within Gaston County uh-huh. um, as far as in the, you know, museum world. We just, again, and in fact, I'm also in a group F3 that I'm, there every single Saturday morning, <laughs> you know, that's where we meet is in the, is in the parking lot there in the, behind the, in the right, main parking right. lot behind the museum. So 
I guess another reason why I, I would get um, get so um, used to it and just being such a just a great uh, asset to here to, to Gaston County. But in your both of your times now that you with the museum, you've been there long enough. There's something that stands out that you're most proud of accomplishing or seeing done or and this is for both of you and you can shout and Nathan can relay the, the message or something that stands out or is it going to be the fossil fair in a week and a half? I'm really excited for the thing that Tony is probably going to be speaking about. Gotcha. So okay. Yeah. That's, that's all I can say. Okay. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I've, got, I've, I've, yeah. It's, I've, it's I've got a little inside of information. Remarkable. Amazing. Wonderful. Anything else? Right, right. See, there's something that I take for granted. I'm out there at least maybe four out of the five days of the week. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you are the farm and fossil program right, specialist. That's one of my wonderf- one of my favorite places at the museum. I'm biased, though. And we did talk a lot about that but episode 64, but listen, we've picked up a lot of listeners since then right. for some reason, um, somehow. <laughs> so, yeah, do, do, give us a quick uh, right. rundown on that if you can. So, the farm is kind of a showcase of agricultural history in North Carolina. So it's really focused on kind of like a colonial kind of like settlement originally. And we've currently updated that to encompass all aspects of agriculture. So we have sheep, goats, chickens, can't leave anybody out, pigs, honeybees, cows, turkeys, and rabbits. Did I leave anybody out? I don't believe so. So we have all those live animals that, people can come and engage with, like actually see where their food comes from. And we also have a seasonal farm when we're not fighting squirrels that's eating my broccoli and cauliflower (laughs) currently. Um, So Yeah, they're scrounging in the winter sometimes, I bet, yeah. They do, they do. Um, But we try to grow enough for everybody to have enough for everybody to go around. Um, But And also a orchard, and then, again, really highlighting those colonial area buildings. Like, they're unique um, and... The way that they're situated, they kind of like meld into kind of like our modern versus historical context that we have going on out there. And I personally really enjoy the space. Again, so I mean, families and kids, again, you've got you've got a lot of animals here in, in, in Gaston County, right in the right in the middle of the city, frankly. And so we're talking about again dinosaurs, sharks, snakes, and live animals. Yeah, I mean, you know, what else could a a family with kids? Um, Kid, and kids a beautiful along. nature trail also that I feel like is taken yeah, for granted that you can explore. Sure. Um, again, the planetarium is remarkable. Like, I love to just sneak in there and watch some afternoon shows, especially the sky tonight, whichever season we're in. Yeah. Just kind of like brush up on my star knowledge, I guess. Yeah, so I had a group. I'm in a peer group um, where I'm basically I'm in, uh, with with peer contracts from all over the country, and we um, come to – People, we come to somebody's town at least twice a year, and we visit and you know talk about business. But when my group came, gosh, here it's been it was before COVID, so it would have been late, uh, maybe 2016, 2017 time frame. Last time they were here in Gastonia, yeah, we I, I took them all to the museum, you right. know, to show them something unique and and, and special about um, Gastonia, and of course. I have to admit, at the time, planetarium was the highlight, you know. Oh, definitely. Um, so it was really, yeah, it was really, it was just, you know, it's nice to be able to, you know, do that for, for some individuals who had never been to Gastonia before, or even the Charlotte, some of them not even, not even the Charlotte area. So, right. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I digress there a little bit as well. So any, before we move on to to talk about, um, I, we're not going to let Nathan off the hook of these Gaston County questions. But anything we haven't asked that I should have asked or anything we would need to share about the fossil fair or anything else currently going on at the museum? I can't think of anything, honestly. Okay. Yep. Shieldmuseum.org. Like, yeah, we'll you can go check out everything that's happening. Sure. We have our calendar because we have lots of um, kind of like Intimate events, like small events. Yeah, so yeah, and, 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 I, and I think groups. it has the planetarium shows listed on there as well yes. that are current. I mean, I went on there yesterday to confirm the date for the fossil fair, just so because you know historically, guessing's great. Of course, I know Naomi and you guys planned it this time, but historically, we'll come. Somebody will come on and we'll have a. They'll talk about an event like 
Um, this is going to air. This is going to air after the event. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so on. we planned this one much better. You know, okay. Uh, that back when Amy was planning them, that's what used to happen. All right. So we're going to talk about this. Is going to be the. Um, what's your favorite dinosaur? Gosh, that's not a fair question. Um, Therizinosaurus. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Yep, so this is going to be the <laughs> Jurassic uh, speed round of questions. Okay. And it's going to be different than the first time um, that you were on. So, okay. Nathan, favorite movie? Can't say it's not safe for work. Um, but my <laughs> second favorite movie is actually anything in the Marvel franchise. I really enjoy oh, Okay. Yeah. That's cool. How about fra- favorite vacation spot? I, we found a very nice place up in Burnsville, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. It's I'm familiar just with quiet. a little bit familiar with Burnsville. Very nice, quiet area, get away. I mentioned that F3 group. Um, there's a relay that goes from Virginia to Asheville, and it goes right through Burnsville. Mm-hmm. One of the the stop there yeah. is at the fire department. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah. But we stayed in just a very nice cabin. Oh got yeah, out, explored nature. And it was lovely. Well, North Carolina mountains has there's Gosh. a lot of there's a lot of. I mean, you just can't choose. There's a lot of unknown. I mean, in in quiet places up there. Favorite memory as a child. Oh gosh, um, probably hiking in the mountains, uh, specifically like South Mountain State Park. Oh, Me and South my Mountain's great, go and, and it's like, what hour away. It's super close. Right. That's a great place. Yeah, we go hiking there, and also going hiking at like Kings Mountain and Crowder's Mountain. I remember that we, I was in Boy Scouts. We hiked ten miles. <laughs> it was a ten mile hike, but it got to ten miles. And then we switched states, going from Kings Mountain to Crowder's Mountain. Oh, yeah. So it was like another 10 miles. So yeah. it was a 20-mile hike, and I was like 12 years old, and it was a brutal day. But I really enjoyed the experience. Yeah, when you're that young, you can't – it's kind of like us trying to fathom it would that, that one and a half seconds on the hour clock. 20 miles, you can't fathom when you're a kid. No, no, it would not end. <laughs> so how about – um you have a like a last or recent TV or online series – or movie you streamed? Gosh. I believe I don't watch television too much, in all honesty. Oh, good for you, actually. Um, I believe we watched the Super Bowl was the last thing. Okay, well, that's... Really hadn't... That is TV. So, uh, hadn't really... Tiffany, I'm going to make you answer that one. I have not. Is that with... um, Is that with Steve Carell? Is he in that one, or is that something else I'm thinking of? Okay. Yeah, I've seen I've, I've seen highlights for it, but I haven't have not have not seen it. So she said shrinking on Apple TV. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting to me how um, just in this day and time, there's too many. There's almost too many choices, right? Right. I mean, uh, we don't have a, a bunch of streaming services, but man, there's, there's, we're always getting recommendations, right? Somebody tell us about this show or that show. I'm like, geez, how do y'all have time for? <laughs> That's me. I don't, that? yeah. don't have the time. <laughs> so since it's been, you know, such a long time since you were last on, I'm gonna add. This is a question I did ask before. So, okay, recent book or article, blog you might follow, another podcast you might follow, or something that you might could share for our listeners. I've been reading the brothers Karamazov. I okay. enjoy Dostoevsky, but it's a very slow read. So. Well, I tell you, I don't know if it was a podcast or something I, or something I've recently read that mentioned that. Um, right. I mean, man, it's, I'll uh, warn you, like. I don't remember what that was about. What, what's the general? I'm still uh, in the depths of it. Okay. It's right. kind of like a, I believe, it's kind of like a discussion on, like, human character from what I can tell so far. Understood. Okay. Right. All right. So. But I'm still fairly early in the book. Okay, yeah, but I have heard. I've, that's one of those I'm like, as soon as you said, it's like, okay, I've heard of that, but I can't recall what 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 triggered that. Um, right. All right, how about um, if you could have coffee with one historical figure, who would it be and why? Mm, gosh. Just the coffee part got me. I'm like, I love coffee. Historical Trying to, so you're you're coming next on that one too, Carl, Tiffany. So maybe Carl Sagan. Oh, okay. I mean, from the work that I've read, like his works that I've read, like 
feel like he has some very interesting perspectives on sure. like science as well as humanities right. like role and yeah. everything. So absolutely, that's good. How about you, Tiffany? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I would agree. She said Jesus, and if anybody listens to these episodes, they they know that uh, of my faith and. But that's too easy. <laughs> okay. Okay. So say that again, Lee Bardogo. Okay. I'm not. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm, yes. Um. Okay. All right. Very interesting. So she's talking about, I guess, the author of Shadow Hunters, and that is a pretty popular. Um, show i believe again i'm not all up on all that stuff i bet my kids are all right so um thank you for indulging us on those questions we you Definitely. know especially when we don't share them beforehand uh, like, you, you did well yeah um you know we used to share those beforehand now i'm like yeah let's just make them no, sweat yeah and, it's, and, it's good and make it Stress up as, is good make it up as we go <laughs> along so uh nathan and, uh, and tiffany this has really been good i appreciate your time so one more time let's just reiterate um, the dates and then the website and everything so people were, reiterate where they can go and learn more. Right. So shieldmuseum.org is where you can go learn about everything that's going on at the Shield Museum. Fossil Fair will be on Saturday, February 24th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we've extended the hours from last year. Okay. And advanced tickets, you can get them online at shieldmuseum.org. $15 for adults, 14 for youth, $11 for museum members, and the date of it will be $18 a person to get in the fossil fair. And you would encourage those just because of parking and knowing how many you, – we would encourage everyone, if they can, to do the advanced tickets. Definitely. Streamlines the process, lets sure. everybody in the building a lot faster yeah. so everybody can get – And you have some exploring. clue of what, what to expect, right? Right, right. All right, well, listen, um, Nathan, I appreciate that. Any last words from either one of you before we close this episode out? Don't miss it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, listen, this Reiterate. is exciting. That's good stuff. It is. So I am going to um, finish up with my own book recommendation and my quote or thought for the week like I typically do. And this happens to be a book that I just finished by um, Dr. Edith Eva Egger. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the name of the book is The Choice. Man, I don't know how many episodes ago. I bet it was really early on. I recommended a book um, called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, who was a oh, – yes who was a psychiatrist who survived um, concentration camps. and um, But he was already a psychi- psychiatrist before uh, the war started. Um, but she was a teenager in Auschwitz and multiple other places. And I actually think, and she became a psychiatrist later in life. But anyway, I'm recommending this book because it was recommended to me by someone that I know. And man, I actually think it's better than Men Search for Meeting personally. Just, oh, just, wow. okay. So it's it's called the choice. She's got a second one follow up called the gift. I haven't read that one yet, but again, I would just um, encourage you to if you're interested in that type of stuff because it gets into her experience and then overcoming it and becoming a psych- psychiatrist to help other people overcome those type of of traumas. And you know, it's just even however many years it is later now, it's just still hard to believe that something like that could occur. But then hearing these stories of somebody overcoming it is, is just an inspirational and i took her a, a quote from her as well and you can look this online it'll come up if you put this in here but this is kind of her philosophy um on live but it comes from again from dr edith eva egger and, and i tell you what a couple at least i checked a couple weeks ago she was she's still alive and lives in san diego um at least uh, from a few weeks ago i think she's 96 or 97 years old but she said Suffering is universal. Victimhood is optional. You know, when I first read that, I was like, I don't know if I like that because, you know, I like being a victim sometimes. <laughs> it makes my felt feel better. But, you know, we're all going to deal with something along the way. And, but we, her point is we, have to, we can decide her and Victor Frankl's point. And I bring up Victor Frankl, too, because she met Victor Frankl, and he was an inspiration for her to do what she ended up doing with her career. Um, and so, anyway, I, I just think it's interesting that we can decide, even though sometimes we don't want to, we can decide how to react and how to deal with these um, situations. So, 
Whew, that's a heavy book, though, but it's worth, worth the read. So to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please spread the word if you can. Continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. And apparently, according to Amy and Naomi, giving us a good five-star rating helps the podcast get, get noticed. Thanks again to Nathan and Tiffany, even though she wasn't in front of the camera, for being our guest today. Gaston's Greatest Producer and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. <laughs>